Here we will solve the problem of a ladder leaning against a wall. It's a classic problem uh, in torque. So let's look at what we have. Well, the known quantities are the mass of the ladder, the mass of the fireman, the length of the ladder, which will give the symbol L, the coefficient of friction between the ladder and the floor, and note that there is no friction between the ladder and the wall. So basically here we have a frictional constant mu, and here we don't, mu is zero. So great, what do we want to find? Well, we want to find what is the minimum angle that the ladder has, that the ladder can have without slipping. And let's label this angle here and call it theta. So anything smaller than this theta and the ladder slips. Great. Well, the first thing to do, as always, is to identify and label the force, both their direction and what they are. And let's start with the ladder. The ladder has mass, and gravity always acts at the center of mass and points downward. So that's M1g. Force of gravity is equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity. The fireman also has mass, and that's M2g. What else? Well, the ladder is touching both the wall and the floor, therefore there are normal forces. And remember that the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface, therefore over here the normal force points this way. And then of course we also have friction, which goes in this direction. Great. Now this system is what we call static equilibrium. Well, Static equilibrium simply means that nothing is moving. And if nothing is moving, nothing is accelerating. And therefore, sum of the torques equals zero, and sum of the forces equals zero. Well, let's start with the torque equation. And in order to do that, we have to choose a pivot. And I will choose this point right here where the ladder meets the floor as the pivot point because that gets rid of two forces in our torque equation. And now let me go on to write the torque equation. Sum of the torques equals, well, let's label our torques. Well, going up the ladder we have m1g times the perpendicular distance from the application of the force to the rotational axis. Well, that, here's the, the force, here's the rotational axis down there, so this is the perpendicular distance, which is also the same as this distance down here. Let's draw a triangle. So let's take that ladder, here's the angle theta, this distance to the center of mass, well it's half the length of the ladder, so that's L over 2, and therefore the perpendicular distance is L over 2 cos theta. And I can plug that in down here. Great, that's one torque. And, that, and the torque of gravity and the, the torque of the uh, fireman's force of gravity will cause the ladder to rotate in that direction. So I'm calling that the positive direction. Well, similarly to the ladder, the fireman um, also has a, you also have to take the perpendicular distance, and it just struck me I didn't say how far the fireman was up the ladder. Let's say that he's at four-fifths up the ladder. So then we would get M2G four-fifths L cosine theta. Great, and now we just have one more force to consider, and that's the normal force. The normal force will cause the ladder to rotate in the opposite direction, so we get a minus sign here, and we get N2, and the perpendicular distance for the normal force, well, that's this distance here. And as you can see from the triangle, that gives us an L sine theta. That's the perpendicular distance from the, the normal force up top to the rotational axis. Excellent. Well, right away we can cancel off the length of the ladder. Oh, because I forgot to mention again, but of course this is all equal to zero because there is no acceleration. There's not even movement. Well, dividing both sides by L, we can get rid of these. And we can also combine 
the cosine terms so that we have m1g, uh, let's give a one-half m1g, uh, plus four-fifths m2g, that's times cos theta, and that equals, bring in the normal force sine theta over to the other side, into sine theta. And with a tiny bit of algebra, in other words, just dividing, um, well, dividing both sides by N2 and then by the MGs to isolate for the angle, we see that you get tan theta equals, tan theta equals M1 half M1G plus four fifths M2 g all divided by the normal force between the wall and the ladder. Great, so we know what the masses are, those are known quantities. We know the acceleration of gravity of course. We only don't know the normal force N2. So let's go about solving for that and we can use some of the forces. Well, do we want some of the forces in the x direction, some of the forces in the y direction? Well, N2 is in the x direction, so let's start there. And so that tells us that, well, what do we have? We have N2 minus the force of friction equals zero. Well, what is the force of friction? Well, the force of friction, let's do a little aside here. The force of friction is simply equal to mu N1. So if we plug that in, then we get, whoops, actually let's stick with black here. I like to save red for crossing things out. We get N2 minus mu N1 equals zero. Okay, fair enough. Now I just need to know what N1 is. Well, Again, let's go back to our static equilibrium equations, and we know some of the forces in y equals zero. That tells us, let's add up the y forces. That tells us that n1 going up has to be balanced by m1g plus m2g. So now I can plug that in for n1, and I get, and I'll write it right here, and I get that n2 equals mu m1g plus m2g. And finally, now we can solve the problem because I will plug in for n2 up there. And when I do that, I get tan theta equals and one-half m1g plus four-fifths m2g all divided by mu m1g plus m2g. And we have now solved the problem. You simply plug and chug in your values and you get the minimum angle that the ladder can stand.